Good morning. Welcome to worship today and Merry Christmas. It is still Christmas. Um, a couple announcements before we begin. I'm Linda Bullenbach, Pastor Linda Bullenbach. I serve in healthcare ministry in Springfield. Uh, my husband, Craig, and I live in Nixon, Missouri. I was able to be with you back in May. Um, Pastor Gina is up in Minnesota, burr, um, <laughs> celebrating Christmas with her family, and I believe she's coming back soon. Um, and so I'm blessed to be able to be here with you today and lead worship, and that's a gift. Um, a couple of announcements to lift up beyond that is that uh, the office is closed Monday and Tuesday of this week, and um, you might want to check the messenger. It sounds like things are resuming. Um, for the most part, next week, there are a couple of um, singing groups that are meeting this coming Wednesday. It sounds like two of them, but please check your messenger. Is there anything else that we should lift up this morning? Okay, then our worship will begin with our gathering hymn. <laughs> Jesus, the bright morning star, shines light in the world. Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Sing to God a new song.
Holy Lord, merciful God, John writes, we have seen his glory. For all too often we only glance at your glory. For all too often we only glimpse at your glory. For all too often we only preview or peek at your glory. I announce to you that God sees all your sin. He also sees Jesus who was born for you, suffered for you, died for you, lives for you, and forgives you. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Today Christ is born. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. The first reading is from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave but a child, and of a child then also an heir through God, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that The inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. 
She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. No, stay up. <laughs> stay up, I was wrong. <laughs> It came upon the midnight clear that Blessed Christmas to each of you. It is still Christmas, as I said earlier. Even though the shelves of the supermarkets are quickly being cleared of all their half-price after Christmas specials to make room for Valentine's Day merchandise, the world rushes us forward. But we do not need to rush past Christmas as soon as we've tossed out our holiday wrappings and put our gifts away. Now when we are about halfway through Christmas, we can sink more deeply into the significance 
of why Jesus came to be born among us. I decorated our home for the first time in years. In the recent years, I've been either too busy or too tired to do that. But this year, I pulled out the tubs and I went through them and I discovered that I have a whole lot more manger scenes than I ever realized. It must be something that happens when you're a pastor and people give you manger scenes. But one of my favorites is probably my most favorite, is one that I brought back from Bethlehem when I was on a tour with my seminary classmates back in January of 95. And it is one of my favorites for a couple reasons. One of, is, of course, because it was from Bethlehem. But more importantly, it's such a simple set, probably because I was on a seminarian's budget. But all that I have is six pieces, Mary and Joseph and two little lambs in a manger and the baby Jesus. There are a couple reasons I love it, and one is because the shepherds and the wise men have not yet arrived. And of course, they will come soon enough. The shepherds and the wise men, people of other cultures and faith, bringing gifts that are unique to them. Soon the circle will be widened. But the thing that I like best about the manger scene is it's the only one that I've seen, at least small one that I've seen, where the baby Jesus is attached neither to his mother nor to the manger. He is free. He is free to be given to the world, free to be loved and despised, free to break the bonds of oppression and challenge the power structures, free to teach us that the path to true life is through death. Today's gospel foreshadows what is to come. It moves us beyond the simplicity of an innocent baby lying in a manger adored by shepherds and angels. It reminds us who Jesus is and why he came. The scene this week begins with just the Holy Family practicing a family ritual, also a religious ritual. They went to the temple so that Mary could be ritually purified as was required for women by the law following childbirth. It was because giving birth was believed to make women unclean, and so a certain number of days had to pass which were less for a boy than for a baby girl. When the time had passed, Mary went with her family to be purified. They went for another reason as well. Because Jesus was their firstborn son, they had to make a sacrifice for him. All firstborn sons belonged to God and had to be redeemed or bought back with a sacrifice. A wealthy family would sacrifice a lamb. But a poor family was required only to sacrifice a pair of turtle doves or pigeons. So we know from this text that Mary and Joseph were indeed poor. These rituals were part of something much bigger than family. The covenant between God and the people of God, or Israel. What Mary and Joseph and Jesus came to the temple that day to do connected them with the covenant community, with people like Simeon and Anna. The Holy Spirit rested on them and gave them the, the wisdom to recognize who Jesus was, that he was in fact the Messiah, the one that all of Israel had been waiting for. Anna and Simeon spoke to the people about what God revealed to them. They spoke of redemption. For just as a firstborn son needed to be redeemed or bought back, all of Israel needed to be redeemed. Time and again, Israel had turned their back on God. And now it was time for them to be bought back with a sacrifice, but not with the sacrifice of a lamb or of doves, but with the sacrifice of God's own son. Simeon and Anna spoke of this. Simeon held the infant in his arms and praised God for all that would be accomplished through his life and death. Simeon prophesied to Mary about what God had begun through Jesus. 
This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Consider how Mary felt when she heard those words. A sword will pierce your own soul too. Do you suppose she considered how she might protect Jesus from the world, from people who would not recognize what Anna and Simeon did? Do you suppose she considered keeping him safely at home, in their own family, among the members of their own community, so that he could be safe, so that her soul would not be pierced? It required great courage on the part of Mary and Joseph to let Jesus go, to recognize that these rituals which joined him to the larger community were just the very beginning. The circle was being widened beyond anything that had happened before. Jesus was not simply brought into the larger Jewish community, but into all the world. Simeon proclaimed it on that day when he praised God, saying, My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. A light for revelation to the Gentiles. Those others, up to that point, considered unworthy of God's grace. Jesus was to redeem even those unclean for whom there was no ritual of purification. On that day, Simeon and Anna recognized that the circle would grow wider than anyone could imagine. They recognized that many would not understand or accept the ways in which Jesus would challenge them to widen that circle. He would be seen as a rabble-rouser. They would experience him as a threat as he would reveal their very thoughts. Because of him, they would no longer get away with their meaningless rituals. This child would call them to worship God where it truly mattered, in their hearts. He would call them to truly love God and to truly love one another. And when they failed to accept this transforming love, when they hated him for threatening their familiar lives, He would still love them. He would love them all the way to the cross where he would buy them back once and for all. What started in that manger in Bethlehem would be completed on a cross outside of Jerusalem. And it would pierce the soul of a mother who understood that she could not keep her son to herself or to her own family or even to her own community. Jesus was not born to remain safe. Neither were we. We were born into community and into the larger community. We are called to enter the lives of one another in ways that do at times pierce our own souls. It is not safe to love God or others. We learn that again and again. To enter into true relationship, that widening of our circle means that we must share each other's joys and each other's sorrows. It means that we are called to work for justice and peace among diverse people that we do not always understand. We cannot honor God's call to be truly involved in a world filled with misunderstanding and hurt and pain and darkness without risking ourselves. Jesus came to redeem not only Israel and not only us, but to redeem the entire family of God throughout the world. Simeon understood that, and Anna understood that. They praised God for making possible things that had never been possible before. They praised God for the widening of the circle. And today, we thank God for sending the Son into the world to redeem all of us. We thank God for widening the circle to include us and to include the entire family of God. 
And we ask that we might be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we may recognize the Christ among us, so that we might truly praise God for the salvation that has come to all people. Let us pray. God, give us the courage to release ourselves and those we love to truly love and serve others, recognizing that you have called us to be a part of something so much bigger than we can imagine when we are caught up in the priorities and challenges that consume so much of our daily lives. We give you thanks that through the gift of your Son, you have redeemed our lives and called us to participate in your salvation. Give us the faith to set aside our own agenda and allow you to accomplish your purpose through us through our faith community, and throughout all the world. Amen. Please rise. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith by singing the Apostles' Creed. near to God as children and heirs of Christ's promise, we pray for all people of God, for our nation and our world, and for those in need. For the faith communities of this town, and for faith communities throughout the world, help us to see ourselves and our neighbors, especially those who differ from us and draw us together in common service to those who are hungry, poor, and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth as we begin another year entrusted with its care, give us lively imaginations to see ways to conserve its limited resources, harness its renewable energies, and conform ourselves to its natural goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace among nations, for peace in our homes, and for peace in our hearts, urge us to cry out at injustice and inequality among your people until vindication comes and righteousness prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who wait in the shadow of death, for those who are ill, for those who struggle to see the future, and for all who lack even their basic needs. 
Transform our love toward them with the vision of eyes that have seen the salvation of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who cannot see, for those who cannot hear, for those who have varied use of their limbs, and for those able to exercise all the senses, help us to appreciate the fullness of God's gift of life in our varied abilities and to celebrate the diversity that reveals a more complete image of the one who makes us all family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up the prayers of our hearts to you this morning, all the thoughts that are on our minds and in our hearts. And especially we lift up this morning a prayer of thanksgiving for the baptism of Christopher Connor, nephew of Don and Julie Harkey. We also lift up prayers for healing for Dale Bauer, Robin Snyder, Becky Smith, Valerie Brown, and those that we name before you silently or out loud at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who have gone before us in this year and now rest in you, led by Mary and Joseph, Anna and Simeon. Let us live in your praise until the day we depart in your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. Amen. God with us, you came as a baby.
It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, throughout our, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and come forward as invited by the ushers. I remind you that all are welcome to commune at this table, all who are baptized and believe that Jesus is truly present as we share this meal together. Come for all is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. On this day, O God, you gave us Christ, the Son, to save us. As you sent the one foretold, send us now with good news for all people. Let the gladness of this feast have no end as we share with others the joy that fills us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, now I see I jumped the gun on announcements. Are there any other announcements that we may have missed this morning? May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the patience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Glory to God in the highest, peace to God's people on earth. Go in peace, share the light of Christ.